What is up guys, Tim Murray here. Today we're going to be looking at my go-to signal chain for my guitar tones. Check it out. So some of you will already know that I'm a massive fan of stuff from Neural DSP. They have quite a few different amp sims available now, with some even being co-designed with artists like Tosin Navasi, Nolly Get Good, and plenty. However, in this video I'll be going over the exact settings I use as a baseline for most of my guitar tones. Before I jump into the tutorial, the guitar I'm using today is a Warmoth Telecaster that I assembled myself, with a bare knuckle silo pickup in the bridge, and a bare knuckle flat 50 in the neck, and piezo saddles in the actual bridge itself. Therefore, this guitar has no tone circuit in it whatsoever. This is just the volume for the piezo. If you want to know more about this guitar, click the card up here to see my in-depth video on it. So in order to maintain at least some form of structure in this video, I'll start from the very start of the chain and then go through step by step. First off in the chain is always the same two plugins, Ableton Stock Tuner and Ableton Stock Gate. Simple, easy, and does the trick. The gate is very important for modern styles of metal as this is what stops the hiss or other noises between those genty palm mutes. I set this by ear simply by adjusting the threshold. I pretty much don't do anything to attack and release, the stock settings are fine. The tuner is also necessary because my guitar with an Evertune bridge hasn't arrived yet. Stay tuned for that one. Hopefully. Stuck in postage. Now next in the chain is the vital part of the signal chain, which is Fort and Nameless Suite by Neural DSP. Now I have four of Neural DSP's guitar amp sims, and Nameless Suite is definitely my favourite by far. The Nameless Suite is modelled after the Fort and Meshuggah amp, with models of their Zool Gate, Hex Drive Overdrive, and Grind Boost Pedal. This is what it sounds like in its default setting. <laughs> Sounds pretty good already. Now I have the most simple way of setting this up for my tone. First, go into the presets, go Artists, Timu Mantisari from Wintersun, Brutal Chuck. This already yields a wicked tone by itself. <laughs> I then make small alterations to the EQ settings on the amp, and also the grind pedal intensity, relative to what guitar I'm using. For example, my Squire Jazz Master baritone sounds brighter than my future and is noisy as hell. So I lower the boost pedal, and then I'll lower the treble and presence knob by ear. I'll then also possibly adjust the Zool gate to get rid of some of that hissing noise. Each guitar will need a different setting, is the point I'm getting across here. You'll also see that I still use the gate and the Zool pedal, even though I use the gate in Ableton. Let's be honest, I gent a lot, so this is to be expected. However, I actually turn the cabinet section off in this tone, simply by double clicking the cabinet icon up here. This is because of the next plugin in my chain. Now recently I've been using Studio Cab Zilla Edition from Get Good Drums. This is an impulse response loader with 8 different channels to work with. Some of the IRs in this pack are wicked. While you can get plenty of decent IRs for cheap or even free online, the 8 channels and different mic and speaker models make this plugin fully worth the money. Check it out. I'll just switch over to a different preset here. They, they all sound pretty good. Last in the individual guitar chain is a stock Ableton EQ. This is used to cut unwanted frequency ranges, particularly in the higher frequencies. I sometimes use a third party EQ here for creative EQing, such as a Pultec EQ plugin or Isotope Neutrons EQ. However, I generally do this on the rhythm guitar bus instead. That way, if I'm double or quad tracking guitars, I only need to use one EQ for all four guitars, rather than four instances with the same settings. This can save on your CPU usage, so for you guys with slower PCs, this is a great habit to get into. Now I'll quickly go over some of the guitar bus settings I use as well. However, this looks different on every track I do, so use this as sort of a thought process explanation. Seeing as I always double or quad track guitars, I will group these in Ableton Live, and then apply the following effects to the entire group. So I'll usually use JST Clip from Joey Sturgis Tones to add a bit of saturation. However, I do so with the mix set around 50% as I don't want the whole signal to be coloured by this plugin. This means that I can give the signal a bit of a boost and some saturation without affecting the rest of the tone too much. I'll bypass the JST clip while doing some chugs and you'll see what I mean. Very, very subtle effect. Next I will generally add some form of bus compression like an SSL plugin from Waves. I only use this a wee bit in order to smooth things out a bit. JST Clip will also compress your signal a bit, so pays not to overdo it. I hope to get a hardware analog bus compressor at some point, but plugins work for the time being. After this, I then move on to EQing. 
This is where I'll chuck a pull tech or isotope EQ, or even sometimes just the stock Ableton EQ again. Note that I have this after my compression, because the individual tracks already have corrective EQ applied. My general method is to go corrective EQ, compression and dynamics, creative EQ. Does it have to be done like this? Not really. You could compress after, but just make sure you corrective EQ before you go randomly boosting shit. This is the part I can't really give a specific setting for because it entirely depends what's in your mix and where you want the guitars to sit in that mix as well. You can also use my sidechain gating technique here as well to really tighten and clean up your palm mutes in certain sections. To see how I do this, check out the in-depth video via the card up here. Now that's the bulk of my guitar tone for 90% of the tracks I do, but just because I'm feeling generous today, here's another trick I use. So you may notice in certain areas of my tracks, notably the outros to most of my songs, my guitars kind of do this fade out effect where they gently fade away to nothing. I'll show you exactly what I do for that right now. Firstly, I place and group the following three plugins on my bus track in this order. Ableton's Auto Filter, Ableton's Utility Plugin, and Replica XT by Native Instruments. Auto Filter is used to gradually filter the sound into nothingness, starting with the high frequencies. This is a low pass filter. I have this mapped to Macro 1 of the audio effect rack. Utility is used to slightly drop the volume of the track, as the next plugin causes a bit of a volume boost. I have the gain mapped to Macro 1 as well. And finally, I'm using Replica XT by Native Instruments, which is a delay, as a reverb. Like, really, it sounds amazing. Simply set it to diffusion mode, and then set the time as fast as it can go. Then, you will have a reverb with a very long tail, or RT60 if we're being all proper, with a short early reflection time. I then map the dry wet to macro 2. Then, I automate the macro controls to gradually fade out whenever I play a sustained note. When this is all done, it sounds like this. Pretty wicked effect in my opinion, hence why I probably use it a little too much. So that's all for this video, I hope you got something out of this. If you need clarification on something in this, or if you have any questions at all, feel free to write them down in the comments section below. So thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day. Timmy out.